the power of money. And I would say already at the beginning, we should look at the existing power structure, highly influenced through the financial capital. And at the same time, we should discuss uh, the potential of money and the financial capital toward a sustainable development. So we have two sides of uh, the question of power to discuss. The first point is, if we speak about power uh, in the society, we can divide three main uh, subjects. The first one is the distribution of properties. The second is what kind of organization has this property? Uh, productive, financial, and other uh, areas. And the third one is uh, uh, what kind of value those who have properties attach to the properties and the organization. So the value question is immediately important for every discussion of uh, social power. Uh, if we take out from all properties, the property of financial capital or money, we have to recognize that money is uh, the most important and the most powerful subsystem of the society. Actually, mainly the financial capital dominates the productive capital divided into man-made capital and to natural capital and even more it dominates human capital. So the relation between financial capital and human capital is a very strong subordination of the human capital. So the question is how can we go out <coughs> from uh, this uh, uh, dominant relation? We have to speak uh, uh, always on hierarchies if we speak uh, about power. So it might be a strong hierarchy, a, a, a soft hierarchy, but in any case it's always a question of subordination. If we look uh, at the system which exists now, uh, how the financial uh, capital is owned, is organized and what is done with which value are attached to the activities of the financial capital. Then we have to immediately see that financial capital is a very abstract uh, term and in fact it is a highly complicated network, global network, disaggregated to different levels and uh, this interrelations of the network of financial capital is just one dimension of the society, but as I said already, the most important. Actually, we have a very strong concentration of property on money and financial capital. Uh, it is on all levels the same, also in productive activities, uh, financial capital dominates very strongly and is concentrated in the system of uh, the subsystem of the financial capital. So, if we leave this subsystem of the society uh, as it is now, for a maximization of the return on capital, so we would never go into a human society. So the first question is uh, in this uh, 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 question of distribution of financial capital is, can financial capital be redistributed? This is very difficult, you know, it turns uh, to the question of ownership, which is sacred in all societies. The second one is, we can uh, regulate the property rights. The property rights uh, uh, is uh, 
an important device to turn the capital, in this case financial capital, to the well-being, not maximization of the return on it, but uh, toward a responsibility to be an owner. Uh, if we have, for example, the, the distribution of capital like it is now, if we have very strong property rights restrictions, we can go to a more human society without distributing uh, the capital. So the responsibility is a device to uh, regulate uh, the influence of the financial capital. So, uh, if we think, if we think uh, uh, how we can do this, we should look into the financial system with uh, central banks and uh, banks and uh, the role of the state and so on. So, the main point is, should the money supply in the society be regulated by the state or might it be to have some uh, competitive system uh, uh, within the financial uh, 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 subsystem so that uh, the divergence between the maximization of the return on capital and well-being is uh, minimized and I think uh, uh, this is the uh, second aspect, uh, the productivity of uh, the financial capital for the humans is to uh, go out from the state regulation, decouple uh, from the central banks, uh, which is only possible partly and is gradually in the longer run uh, uh, perspective, and uh, to make more participation in financial institutions by the humans. Those, the employees and all uh, actors, including NGOs, should participate in the decision of the uh, decoupled financial system uh, from the state. And uh, here we see immediately how many regulations are needed. For example, uh, cryptocurrency is a very important device to uh, reduce the exchange uh, and uh, transaction costs uh, and so on. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we need some regulating system, partly supported by the state, but if the uh, financial capital as a subsystem has in, in itself established some regulate, regulation uh, because the state is not so strong to regulate everything so we have to have uh, a device or several devices how to regulate uh, the, uh, the financial capital internally the one point is going out from the state, and if you go out from the state, you have within the financial capital, which is uh, self-regulating, we have uh, additional regulated uh, uh, devices uh, to go more into a human-centered development. Last point, uh, the power of money for the development now, the sustainable development is very strong because you can increase it can, uh, uh, societal wealth. So money is, is very important even in those cases which, uh, in which it is decoupled from the state and is self-regulating. It is a power to enhance economic wealth if it is properly regulated. So this is the main point and uh, you see immediately there are many questions how to regulate a more autonomous financial system toward a sustainable global development.